I love this really grainy textured shading style, but everywhere I could find online that talked about it, everyone had to illustrate in Illustrator and then finish it in Photoshop and do all the shading and texture there. So I came up with a way to start to finish, do the whole process in Illustrator. And I do that using opacity masks. Uh, in case you aren't familiar with opacity masks, I'm just gonna show really quickly kind of the concept of the opacity mask. So I'm gonna mask this shape with this as an alpha mask. So an alpha mask means if it's opaque and visible, it's white. If it's invisible, it's black. So I'm just gonna lay this over top of the circle I want. I'm gonna select the green circle and this group that I have. Go into the transparency panel and just hit make mask. So now I have my green circle still intact and everywhere that was white on that opacity mask is still you know dark green just as visible everywhere that was black is completely invisible and grays are somewhere in between so that's the concept that we're going to go with uh, i'm going to use this illustration i made of our puppy a couple years ago first i'm going to create a duplicate of that and fix a few things the way i built this illustration this upper mask is all one piece I want to split all of these objects. So the easiest way to do that, well, first I need to, I used clipping masks for these eyes. I'm going to get rid of everything but the outer actual mask. Just get rid of the pupils just to simplify that. Okay, so now if I select this group, I'm going to hit K and use the live paint tool. I'll click on it and then I'll select a new color. I'm going to paint the upper mask one color. And I'll paint the lower mask another color so that I can select them as a whole easier. And then we'll choose a shading color. Okay, I'll just do the eyes pink. So now I can hit uh, object, expand, and that'll give me a group of strokes. And I don't need those. Now I have a group of fills. I have those. So I'm going to magic wand the green group those, magic wand the pink, group those. So what I'm gonna do first is choose what color I want this red to shade to, and I just want it to shade to this same dark brown. So I'll select my green. If I just click on that stroke, I, I'll pick up the stroke width and color, and then I'll shift click on that, select that dark brown. I'm gonna move those to the front of the lower mask. Now I select the lower mask group, same thing, but I want this dark cream. So I'll click on the stroke and then I'll shift click to pick up that darker color. And then I actually want the nose to be this lighter color. That's, that's gonna have a highlight on the nose. Everything else will have shadows. So this will be my shading color. And then actually I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do a white. So he'll have some white highlights on his eyes. We'll see how that looks. So now I need to create the opacity mask that will kind of create this shading so it's not solid color. So what I'm gonna do first, I'm just gonna apply a gradient to all of the objects. So just hit the period key or click down here under the, on the toolbar under your color boxes. And that'll apply a gradient. The other thing I'm gonna do is I want black strokes and everything. So now I have, they're all uniform, same gradient, same stroke. The gradient I'm gonna actually flip and just adjust. So it doesn't look like much now, but basically this everywhere that is dark is where you will have shading and texture in these colors. So on the eyes, you'll bring in white where it's black. So I'm gonna adjust that gradient so that he's got a highlight on the upper right of his eyes. And then, I mean, really what I'm, what I'm going for with this is kind of just a stained glass 2D illustration and it's not really accurately portraying depth with realistic shadows, but if I wanted to, then I could go and adjust each one to, to be a little bit more true to life. But that's how you can adjust that shading. So if you want more shadow, move the gradient, maybe change the angle. Um, you can use the gradient mesh tool if you're familiar with that to get really accurate shading in, in complex paths and shapes. Um, but you have to be pretty patient to use that tool. 
Let's see, the other thing I'm gonna do, I just noticed, so this black, it's not going as black as my strokes and I want it to be true black. So select that group, you still have, they're all using the same gradient. You can fix that, click that black gradient widget, convert the color to RGB instead of grayscale. And then I'm gonna do the same with the white, just to make sure they're in the same color space, make sure it's all smooth. Um, so then I'm gonna pull this out a little bit because that's a little more shadow than I want there. But anyway, so you can fine tune your shading. Oh, and actually you can do, I'll do a radial gradient on the nose. And so since black will be more visible, the black on the nose, just like the eyes, will be a highlight. So, okay, that looks good for now, as far as I can tell. I'm gonna really be able to tell what's going on better. I'm gonna select that whole group. And I'm going to apply in the appearance panel, I'll apply an effect. I'll go to texture, grain. So this is where you can really see how it's going to look. I'm going to up the intensity so that black in the gradient will be true black with no texture. And then you can play with contrast if you want a smoother fade between the, the dark and the light. Lower the contrast. If you increase the contrast, you'll get a shorter fade. Um, so I, I want this kind of more soft fade between the, the values. So I'll hit OK. That looks OK, but it's really coarse. So what I can do to make that grain a little finer, there's two ways I can do it. I can either change the document settings. So I go to Effect, Document Raster Effect Settings. Default is 72. If I do 150, that'll look quite a bit finer. If I want it even finer than that, I can go up to 300, or you can do a custom, you can do 600 DPI or whatever. It depends on the scale you're working at and the style you wanna go with. The other thing I can do, um, maybe I have two objects, and this one I want more coarse than this one. So the document is set to 300, but what I can do is I can set this object, I can do an effect, of rasterize and drop that back down to 72 and I just have to drag that rasterize effect above the grain effect and then I'll get that coarseness back. So you can customize by object or you can just change the whole document. So I'll just leave it at 300 for the document. So once I'm, I'm pretty happy with that grain, I can just lay this over top of my colors object. I wanna select both of those groups and hit make mask. It'll use the top object as the opacity mask. And now, so I said by default, the alpha mask uses white as visible, but we wanted to use black so we could kind of see the shading, darker is shaded. So I'm gonna invert mask. Now that basically is taking that grain pattern and just applying color to it. So now I can just take this and position it over top of my original illustration. And there I have my shading. Now that you have the shading over top of your original layer, you can see anything you kind of want to tweak. Like, I don't love the frostiness over the eyes. I think that's too much white. So if I select my mask layer again, it'll show me in the transparency panel, okay, here's my original object, and then here's the opacity mask. I can select that mask. Now I can tweak it, so if I select this, so you've got the gradient selected. If you want to get that preview of the gradient back, you can option click on the opacity mask. Now you can see what's going on again, get that full contrast view. So I want to tweak this gradient. I want more white because there's too much highlight going on. So I'll just tweak those gradients to be a lot, a lot shorter. Now option click on the preview again get me the, the final view. So maybe I don't like these speckles in the eyes too. So if I select the whole mask object, I can go back into grain and, and this is where I would want to fine tune the intensity again. So maybe I turn the intensity too high because the white isn't going to, to solid white. So if I turn that down a little bit, I can kind of, I can find a happy medium so that'll look a little better. And now I got rid of those speckles in the eyes. Uh, another thing, 
you're getting this kind of ghost outline, maybe you can just delete the strokes. So if you hit forward slash, remove the strokes off of the mask layers, now you don't have those little ghost outlines coming in. Yeah, if you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.